What is up? Mark here with Blue Cloud Solutions, and today I've got a really sweet app we're gonna review. We've got Pop the Lock. It's an intuitive app that has hit the top charts and even received over three million users and get this just the first 10 days. That is pretty awesome, right? I wish I, wish I could do that repeatedly. Uh, the reason I decided to review this app is because I wanted to do a quick app review for developers out there who are maybe just starting out. Uh, possibly you have an awesome idea for an app or even in the beginning stages of app development, but you feel totally lost. And um, I've definitely been there. So if this sounds like you, I'm here to tell you that I'm gonna go nice and slow, walk through some of the basic app and account information you need to be aware of to ensure for a smooth development experience. This is a perfect app for us to use as an example. It's simple and actually reminds me a lot of the tap to shoot app we give away for free when you sign up to Blue Cloud Select. Pop the Lock also reminds me a lot of the Top Charts app Crazy Wheel with a few more unique but uh, simple features, which is what we push for when developing apps. We want to emulate but keep it unique, right? So items we're going to go over today are iTunes Connect. This is the main focus of the audit uh, because it's really important to get familiar with iTunes Connect as much as possible when starting out. Codes, we'll also talk about codes. I'm gonna overview some key items you need to be aware of when developing. Uh, we will touch on monetization, specifically in-app purchases and ad networks and how they work. We'll talk about leaderboards, sharing features such as social media integrations like Facebook and Twitter. And in closing, I really wanted to briefly touch on the UX of this app because it's such an amazing app. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. So we're gonna start with iTunes Connect and the goal here is to show you what you see on the App Store and how that coincides from the developer portal from iTunes Connect. So for example, I pull up the top charts here. This is actually the top free uh, for iPhone and um, you'll see that pop the lock here is number 16. That's, that's our example. It's got some heavy hitters before it. It's pretty impressive that it's number 16. Uh, so we're going to click that and we have a variety of information here. We have an icon, we have a title, we have a company name, um, a screenshot. You'll notice that there's only one here. Usually we get five, but this app is so simple. They did a, actually a great job by just deciding to, to choose one screenshot. Uh, we also have a description, some review notes, and some basic, basic information like the category, um, the version, the size, the rating, uh, the simple stuff. So let's go through all of this information, the, the stuff that I just went over on iTunes Connect so you can see exactly where this is stored and if you ever need to make any changes, uh, you can do so without having to hire or, or pay a developer. Okay, so we're back in iTunes Connect and we are gonna spend our time in the My App section. This is where all of the information about your app and your app itself is stored. So we're gonna click there and we start off in the app information category. These categories are all pretty basic. I'm gonna only go through two of them. Uh, again, test flights for testing, uh, pricing and availability, you can guess what that's for. But let's just run through a couple of these really quickly. So app information, the first thing we see is the name and this is the title. This is the title that shows up on the store. We just saw pop the lock and uh, on their account, this is where they enter the title. And it's that simple, you can literally just change it around and you know, you've got your title done. Uh, I just wanna point out really quickly that this is localized to English. If you wanted to market your app to um, Dutch, for example, <laughs> uh, you can translate the title yourself. Uh, add Dutch as a language, and there you go. You've localized your title to Dutch. Pretty straightforward. Your bundle ID, every app has its own bundle ID. Again, you could learn to do this yourself. You don't need to pay a developer to do this. He might charge you an hour or two hours, and this takes literally two minutes. I recorded a video in the Kino posts on, on our blog in Blue Cloud Solutions. It'll walk you through how to create a bundle ID, um, but this is just an idea that lets Apple identify your app. We also have categories, pop the lock was in games. Let's say you had a uh, educational app, you can select that here. Let's say you wanted to test that with a health and fitness or navigation or anything else. You can literally just drag down 
select your category and you're done. Again, this is this is super great in case you're looking to, to test ASO, to test to see which category your app does best in. You don't need to hire a developer to do that. Um, let's check out... Okay, screenshots. You noticed on Pop the Lock that they had um, one screenshot, but it's uploaded to two devices, iPhone and iPad. Uh, unfortunately, unlike other platforms, we do have to upload each screenshot individually. Upload for the iPhone 6 Plus. I'm gonna do it there. Uh, iPhone 5, iPhone 4, iPad, iPad Retina. And again, this, you, wanna, you wanna do this because you want your, the user's device to have the best screenshot, the best resolution, and be fitted properly. So anyway, if you wanna upload your screenshots, like Pop the Lock did for their one, you can literally, like it says here, drag and drop it in there. You can reorganize the order however you want, and that's how simple it is to add the screenshots. You don't need to have a developer do this if you're doing updates, or let's say you wanna change the order of your screenshots. It, you know, this is, it's this simple. Description. Uh, we saw on Pop the Lock that they had a small description, and this is where we can edit our description. We can enter whatever text we'd like. And the important thing to know about the description is that we can change this whenever we want, and it'll, it will be live immediately on the App Store. So if we're having a sale, or if we want to address a bug, or a season change, or anything, we can update our description, description and it'll, it will go live immediately in the store, unlike some of this other data that go, has to go through review. For example, the keywords. We all know about keywords. This is how the App Store helps index us. Um, I bet we'd all pay a lot of money to see what Pop the Lock is using for their keywords. But uh, anyway, you can enter your keywords here and we separate them by a comma and um, we have the character count down here and that's where we enter the keywords, pretty simple. We have a support URL. This could be a Facebook page. It could be a blog, whatever you have that's affiliated to your company. Um, that's where we enter that information, scroll down, and we have the build. This is great. This is when our coder uploads an app for us. Maybe you know how to upload an app. Um, I hope to do a video for that in the future. If you have a coder upload an app for you, it'll be right here and you'll select it. Uh, it'll have a plus sign next to it. You'll select the build and then we can submit for a review. Um, other information that we have is the icon. Again, this is the icon that's gonna be shown on the App Store. Uh, we can upload it here. This is our version, our first version is always gonna be 1.0. Copyright is your company. Um, this is just basic information. This will not be shown on the App Store. Uh, this is the rating. We saw that Pop the Lock was a four and we can easily you know, see if our, if our app is violent or sexual or whatever it is to adjust our rating. Game Center, um, if you're integrating Game Center, you wanna make sure you've got that checked. And then we always wanna put in our app review information. This is just who's gonna be contacted in case Apple has any questions. And I recommend you fill out this information accurately because they do follow up and with any notes that the reviewer may wanna know. And again, down here, automatically release, manual release, pretty straightforward, right? So with all of this information, you could log in to iTunes Connect and you don't have to have your developer do this for you. Before you even hire the developer, you could enter as much information as you can, besides probably the build. Um, and you know, you've taken this, you, you've you've got this taken care of. Your developer is going to be pumped that he doesn't have to walk through all of this crap with you, and it's literally going to you know frustrate the hell out of him and waste your time. So I really recommend that you uh, pay attention to this stuff, go through, investigate it. And also, if you want to do updates, if you uh, are launching an app, it's important that you check your developer's information, and this is the place that we do it. Okay, let's talk about codes now. Uh, I've got the app open on the screen here to help follow, us, follow along. You need to know what type of codes you have or what type of code you're looking to develop. And you don't need to know the difference between Objective-C, Ruby on Rails, Corona, Java. You just need to know what programming language your code was written in. And this is for obvious reasons. Let's say you are switching development teams and you're in the hiring process. You need to tell those guys you know, what your app is coded in. Also, if we're coding a project from scratch, you don't need to know the coding terminology, but you need to be verbal with what you want. You need to tell the developer, 
hey, listen, I want an app that can go cross-platform. I want to make sure that I can publish it on the Apple Store and on Amazon and Google Play. Um, so telling that to your developer will tell him, hey, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to code this baby in Cocos 2DX. That way I can export it to multiple platforms. Another important thing to talk about are the resources, the images and text within your app, maybe video, whatever. Um, this app is very small. I think it's under 20 megabytes, and that's great. A lot of that is because of the resources. Um, we have, you know, a couple background colors. We have uh, a circle and a little meter line, some numbers and some icons. That's about it. Well, what's good to know, though, is that you keep your resources as low as possible. Uh, that way you're going to save costs on your developer, on your designer. It's going to take up less, less space on the app store and on, people, on users' devices. Also, you can use tricks like using text. Let's say you have a lot of text in your, on your app. Uh, for example, you have an onboard tutorial. Um, you can have the developer put in text, and they're actually really good at doing this because they do it. They don't have to rely on a designer. And that'll save you a lot of uh, money and space. Another thing I want to talk about is the monetization of this app. I love it. It's so simple and straightforward and works like a charm. Um, there's two methods of monetization, excuse me, monetization within this app. There are ad networks and in-app purchases. You'll notice right away at the bottom, we have uh, an ad banner. And what's really cool about most ad networks is they want to advertise their services. So if you look in the very, very far right of this banner, um, you will see iAd, so we can see that this is an iAd platform that they're using to serve ads. What's cool to know about that is if I have a similar app, let's, let's say Tap to Shoot, you've already got it in your, in your code bank, um, I can use iAds on my app. You'll notice now that the banner actually went away mid-conversation. <laughs> that's, that's great timing also. When you're researching apps, make sure that you are aware of their ad space and how they're using ads. Sometimes they time it because they don't want to piss off users. Um, this ad also serves uh, chart boost pop-ups. I don't think I can make one go, but if you play a game and you lose a couple, there will be a chart boost pop-up. Um, and you'll notice that that doesn't happen every time. They've had the coder uh, set, that, set the frequency of the pop-up so that it doesn't bother the user. And what's really great, um, We'll talk about this later with the UX is you can check uh, the reviews of this app and they were actually getting complaints about pop-ups bothering users. So what they did was they fixed it and they had pop-ups only pop up every now and then. Um, that's great for Apple reviewers and to pump you up. That's great for your user base. They're psyched on, on having an app that doesn't have as many ads pop up. Uh, so everybody wins. The other thing that we have are rewards. Um, if you play this app too many times, it's going to ask you to watch a video to, to, to gain some more lives. That's, that's a pretty styling way to monetize an app. It gets you, you know, again, style points for watching a video. Um, it's hard to sneak by Apple sometimes. I don't suggest having that on your first version, your first app being submitted, but uh, another great strategy. And then we have the in-app purchases. In-app purchases are pretty much based on two forms. We have consumable and non-consumable. Uh, this ad has a, or, sorry, this app has a remove ads in-app purchase, and that's actually non-consumable. What, what that means is non-consumable is that's set for life, that's concrete. So once I remove the ads, they're never coming back. Uh, if we had a consumable purchase, let's say like uh, lives, if I wanted to purchase five lives, you know, I'm going to go through a life, die, that's four lives, three lives, two lives, one life, and I can purchase that package again of five lives. That's a consumable purchase. And again, Pop the Lock does a great job monetizing this. I'm specifically, uh, are particularly really pumped on the way that they use timing. Um, it doesn't bother the user. You can see that ads kind of come in and come out in a very fluid manner. Um, and it's not trying to get, they're not trying to trick the user to get taps. We also have the top right, you see we have Game Center. Leaderboards, this is super simple. Apple loves this, so do the users, but you can kind of see, you know, how you rank compared to, wow, 3,609,000 other people. Um, you know, achievements, challenges, you can like it on Facebook. And this is all built by Apple, so it's really easy for coders to put it in, and it has some fun, some fun stuff for, to play, for us to play with. Also sharing. Uh, you will notice that after we play a game, I think we have to actually win if I can do it here. 
Wow, this is getting... Obviously, I've played this game a lot. <laughs> so after an achievement, you see... Oh, there we go. There's our chart boost pop-up. Um, I'm not pissed off because I just achieved the next level. So, okay, I'm going to cross that out. And uh, we also have sharing features. We have Facebook and Twitter. This was freaking great. Again, it pops up right at the right time. These are STK, SDKs, software development kits, and they're tools that we as developers can use for a variety of ways. Facebook has its own SDK. Twitter has its own SDK. And if you have your developers put this stuff in early and tell them, hey, I wanna have sharing features, I wanna have tracking features within these platforms, you're, you're ahead of the game, you're, you're a rock star. Uh, one sharing thing that we do not see in here that's outside of the app is YouTube. And if you go to YouTube and you top, type in pop the lock, you'll see a variety of videos that have thousands, if not tens of thousands of hits. Um, that's freaking great. I mean, these guys did a great job. Uh, they're a small team of reaching out and doing a quality launch, having people review their app um, and having links set in those reviews so people can download it. So another great thing I wanted to share with you. Finally, I wanted to go through the UX of this app and just kind of show you how simple but quality is. Again, I think this is very, very similar to Tap to Shoot. You could make some, some upgrades to Tap to Shoot and have an app just like this. So the first thing I like a lot is obviously the timing. We talked about the apps popping up after you'd achieve a level. That's not really bothering me. It's just one ad if you've got like three or four. You know, uh, Back in the day, Carter was very successful with having the chart boost pop up the smaller ad, and then it would have App 11 pop up after that, so you're pushing ads you know, nonstop and tricking the user. That stuff's not really working anymore. You wanna make sure that you're giving the user a positive user experience. Um, pay attention to the timing, you know? Pay attention to the timing like these guys did uh, as far as when to, to place your ads. Also, the banners at the bottom, I'm a huge advocate for banners. They don't really bother anybody and they, they bring in revenue. Uh, the mechanic is freaking awesome. Um, you want to make sure that your app, if it's a simple puzzle one like this, you know, this, this app is all based around mechanic. I don't think they had to do too much testing to figure out what the best uh, speed and mechanic for this app is, but make sure that you're giving a quality user experience by your code's mechanic. Also, language. Uh, we can see down here in the description kind of the language of this team and they just seem like a bunch of fun guys. You know, they're simple, they're not trying to trick me. They're straightforward, but their language is set in a manner that's different from the norm. It doesn't sound like a, ro a robot wrote this or somebody from a different country who can't quite speak English that well. Um, here's the, the what's new version. And again, it sounds, they're, they're very nice. They, you know, it's, they're grateful. Um, it's it's just got great a great vibe to it. You can also see here in the how to play area, uh, you know the language that they use is great, and it just adds a simple stuff that we can do that gives a huge boost to the, to the experience of our game. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, again, this app is for basic people looking to kind of just get familiar with apps and iTunes Connect and kind of having a good user experience monetization. Um, some ad networks and learn a bit about code and um, please follow up, shoot me an email, shoot us an email at support at bluecloudsolutions.com and ask us some questions. Let me know if you have any codes you want reviewed. This is pretty basic stuff. We're going to kick it up about 25 notches here pretty soon and talk about some high level developer information and strategies that people use in the store. But for now, this is Mark and I am studying off.